call it art. It's art. Like, cause like I said, one song I might sing, and then one song I might get on her rapping, and then one song I might get on her singing and rapping. I done heard, I done had a guy literally come to me and tell me, bro, your song make me want to cry. Your songs be making me want to cry. So, that feels wow. good, doesn't it? It do make me feel good. I love it do that. make me That's feel good. That's a powerful thing. Yeah, it do make me feel good though. Um, it mean I'm doing something right. Yeah, I'm exactly. Right. Welcome to another episode of Lucky Time Explosion! Wow! <laughs> it's Monday, my dudes, and we're back in the studio. Yay. We have a special guest this week of 36 Muds. Say hey, what's up. What's up, y'all? Hey. Y'all feel up? So much love. Yeah. Happy to have you here. Yes, definitely. Happy definitely. Happy to be here. So welcome back to Lucky Time, your source for art news, art chatter, musicians, artists, painters, uh, and all that. Let's go through some headlines today. Uh, coming from our buddies over at Art News, we have Turkey, the country of Turkey, has mm. banned a transgender art exhibition uh, amid intensified LGBTQ crackdowns. So crackdowns? They are crackdowns. like they're like cracking down on drugs. Right, you'd think. Like, you said like, they banned a transgender art? Yeah, they're like banning, the banning a transgender art exhibition. So there's an exhibition coming out you know, about transgenderism, I guess, and about from these artists who identify that way. Mm. And they're saying no. That's crazy. We are a conservative Islamic country uh, after <laughs> under Erdogan. You know, he's Erdogan's kind of like our our um, George W. Right. He's like the version of that over there. Mm-hmm. I think uh, this one's exciting for me though. This Ooh. is the uh, Academy of uh, Museum of Motion Pictures, which I, I don't think it's the same as the Museum, Museum of, of Moving, Moving Mo- Pictures. Ooh. That's in Queens. Something you guys yes. should check out. Oh, it's oh, awesome. New York. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. But they're gonna. The Academy of Museum of Motion Pictures is gonna recreate 2001: A Space Odyssey Stargate this fall. They're gonna make like a movie prop inside this uh, museum for film, which is pretty great. Hmm. Uh, and let's see what else. Uh, U U Arts, the uh, Pennsylvania Academy that closed down, one of the biggest and oldest art schools in the country that closed down uh, a while back that we were covering. Uh, they are facing unfair labor practice complaints and uh, from the Shuttered School Union. And so they're continuing to have legal issues about their closure because it was sudden, right? Mm. Everybody was like, everyone was going to art school. And then they're like, nope, <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> and lastly, uh, interestingly, uh, we have Christie's Art and Tech Summit. And this, this headline like cracks me up. It says, uh, AI dominated, but there were few answers about its utility. Did AI write that article? Probably. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we win. It did. It's like all the humans. I have limited. Uh, have you ever messed with AI and making I got a music? cousin that I got a cousin that messed with AI. Uh, yeah. I always thought it was crazy because you never who, you never thought you would see the day where AI would be doing what it's doing. I, I know. Never thought of AI. Right. Yeah. We used a couple a website called Suno a couple times. Uh, it's terrifying for like musicians and artists. We share this in common about uh, what's going on, where you can go on this website and just type, you know, whatever you want to hear in a couple sentences. Press a button, boom, it kicks out a three-minute song in like two seconds. That's crazy. And you can just be like, write me a hip-hop song in the style of this artist, uh, you know, uh, about this. Actually, they won't let you say in the style of that artist anymore. Though they cut that out. Not with Suno. Oh. They won't allow you to get specific. You got to be like vague, like uh, old school hip hop or, or modern day hip hop or yeah. harp disco. You can use like genre real words. Specific. Though, right? you I don't know if specific. it will actually do harp disco. That's pretty specific. I, I'm sure eventually you'll be able to do, you know, very specific stuff. So they harp create disco is specific. their own lyrics. Like you can, you can write, write your in. own lyrics. You can write your own lyrics. And then it's like, what do you want this song to sound like? And all you have to do is give it like three words. That's crazy. And that's yeah. it. I can only imagine <laughs> how many artists probably didn't do it that too. Yeah. I mean, right now I could, t- because we use Suno enough, we right. could kind of tell. For fun. For fun, for not fun. for commercial profit. We yeah. could tell that, that it's AI, yeah. but there are a lot of, most people, I would assume that they would not be able to distinguish the AI music from real music. Right, right. I right. wouldn't. I wouldn't. Right. It's it's tough, and, and eventually you're not going to be able to know it all. Yeah. Are y'all familiar with like Kendrick Lamar? Oh, yeah. Okay, so they said it was a song where he supposedly dissed Drake, but then it came mm-hmm. out that it was just the AI version, though. Oh, really? So he didn't really do it? <laughs> I don't know if it was true or not, but that's what I heard, though. Because there was oh. so much talk about that diss track. I know there was. Yeah, it was two two or three different versions that came out, but the first one that came out, they yeah. said it was an AI, but 
I really can't tell if it was AI or not. You really. can't tell. You, yeah, you know, no one can tell. Recently, you know, someone made a bunch of pictures of uh, it was like a, a Simpsons episode with Trump dead in you know in a casket. Yeah. And right. uh, but it was never really actually in a it's Simpsons episode. It was just someone created it with AI, and the people who created the Simpsons were like, "We that's not never real. Even that's not real episode. at all." No, nope. right. nobody knows what's real anymore. Nope. Although they nope. did call the <laughs> nope. they did call the Kamala Harris with um, Lisa. I guess oh, that's yeah, big yeah, now. Yeah. With the did. same, you know, she's running for president. And she has right. like the same exact dress with that's the necklace. True. It's pretty disturbing. That's weird. Well, Simpsons did it. You know, they're like they've been running so long that they've covered. I think it's just the fact that they've covered everything that exists because they've been making episodes for like forty fucking years yeah, now. That's insane. Uh, have you ever gotten a check from Spotify? Uh, yes, I have actually. Well, I still do to this day, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, that's the better. thing. That's the thing that's going on with AR right now that seems uh, dangerous is like Spotify is uh, the company, right? Is making playlists of certain genres of music, mainly like instrumental, like smooth jazz, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they're making up artists and they're using AI to create so Spotify songs. specifically. Yeah, Spotify, the company is making these uh, like playlists of like, you know, smooth jazz listening playlists. And it's all got these weird artists that don't fucking exist. And they're, they're generating. And they're money. generating the shit, so they that's, don't have to pay anybody. So they can just make their own tracks and like roll. That is it's, crazy. Yeah. So uh, us artists, we have to like you know kind of. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna have to become lot. traveling to make a big minstrels noise. again. We're yeah. gonna have to do it for real. We get <laughs> on some weird broken down bus and we we go to a very populated area. We're like hello, <laughs> and just let it go, let it go. They could tell us to shut up, but we'll just keep going. Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, that's what you're doing now, right? You're on a press tour here in New York. Yep. yep. First time visiting? First time. Welcome first to time. New York. Yes, yes, yes. It's a mecca. NYC. NYC. Definitely. Is this Manhattan or this? We're uh, in Manhattan. Okay, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. okay. We're okay. like in the, almost in the middle, not in the, quite in the middle. Where would you say the middle of Manhattan is? Uh, it's a few blocks north. Ah. It's like the UN. Like so how do y'all know when, yeah. like, because New York big, so how do you know when you're in a different part of New York? Because, like, where I'm from, it's literally, like, 40 blocks. Like, you can stand in the middle of the town and see one end, the beginning. Yeah, the the <laughs> yeah no. That's New Cairo, York, Illinois? Cairo. 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 I said Cairo, Cairo like Egypt. This not, you're not it's the not first like person that. that did that. You're not the first person that did that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, no, New York is oh, we a know, lot bigger. Than we know where we are based like. on the water, you know? It's like, if you go over the water, you're in either Jersey or the Bronx or Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, but... Manhattan, which is named after Manhattan, a Native American uh, name for I didn't it. Know that Manhattan, Manhattan. Okay. There actually is a plan right now Ooh. underway to extend it to like to build to like fully build out. Like you're gonna go to the Statue of Liberty later. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna build out all the way to that island. No, so that it's that's in, crazy. So land. That in, they're land gonna build out land by, all yeah, the way out. In 2050, they're gonna like connect some of the islands and extend it even further. Which How? Is, uh, built landfill. They're gonna dredge the bottom right, of the river and, right. and put the dirt on top, like it's mm -hmm. been. Well, yeah, but tell me a little bit about uh, Illinois and, and and growing up there and uh, um, like how it inspires your music. Well, I'm from Southern Illinois, so yeah. it's pretty much like the the south part of Illinois. Yeah. It's the country. Um, it's like I said, everybody know everybody. You can stand in the middle of the town, see mm -hmm. one the beginning and the end of the town. It's yeah. not too much there. Uh, we don't have a Walmart. <laughs> we don't got a gas station. So you weren't too far from home. When you need to come back home, your parents would give a good whistle and you would hear it. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. That's crazy. He could be all the way down. My dad used to have the craziest whistle. Man, he used to do the one with the two fingers. Oh, uh, yeah. See, I, I, I ain't that. never learned how to do the oil like this. How no, do you can't do it? do it. I ain't never learned how to do that. I can do this one. That's gotta, like, crazy. Oh, you got to see when we're outside, like, like hundreds of birds come and attack That's us true. That's when crazy. he does that. So in a, in a small town like that, you know, you how did you get into like making music and art? You, I come you from said you made art? art? Yeah, now let's, yeah, we can talk about let's the talk art about first. Let's talk about that a little like, bit. Because that's what I was doing first before I did music. Oh, uh, no way. Okay. Yeah, when I was uh, a kid, I was always like, I just catch myself sitting in the room. My brother, he did art. So they used to, he was like three years older than me. So. If he was eight, I was five. You know what I'm saying? So I used mm. to sit there and watch him draw little cer draw certain things. He used to draw cartoon characters. Yep. That led me to trying to draw real people like Tupac. Like I used to always draw Tupac. Like if anybody see this video, they'd be like, oh yeah, he was, every time he drew something nine times out of 10, it was Tupac. That was the first <laughs> thing I, I pretty much learned how to draw. There you um, go. Yeah, but art, it was almost like, a, to this day, I still like art, but I just don't, I'm I'm always doing some mess where I pretty much don't have time to draw. If that right. makes sense though. Like the time I could be drawing probably is the time I'm in the studio making a song or something like that. That's true. Yeah. The yeah. thing is your voice is making your money. 
There you, know you go. It, you know there you go. But if but if I get paid for but if I get paid for my heart, I'd be doing that too. Cause that's that's probably <laughs> right. more easier. You know, honestly, that's easier. You'd think so, but uh, one of the thing about art that uh, like visual art, I think the big people have a misconception of is that it's you know similar to music. Like you need to have a lot of time put into it. You know, you need to have practice. Meaning you need too. to have build your repertoire you know you need to build your your discography right and with painting it's even worse it's like you know if you're doing art like if, if you don't have like 300 500 800 pieces like you haven't really done it yet right they right. say that everybody has like 500 bad um drawings in them you know i think it's probably even less for music maybe maybe you have like an, a bad album and then you learn so much and then you, you grow a lot do you feel like a picture should have meaning to it um, you know, I think they all kind of do. You I'm asked an abstract. the right person, actually. You're right. That's you true. asked the right person. Because I'm, I'm the type of person, I feel like every song should have a meaning. Like, what's a song without a meaning to it? Mm. Right? So that's how I feel about art as well. Like, Yeah. So I as like, an abstract artist, how do you explain the stories behind your artwork? The, well, it's, it's very, um, the, it's like the medium is the message. You've probably heard people say that before. And like, you know, my meanings the the meaning behind the painting is how i'm doing it because i paint in virtual reality right so i'm i'm, I'm trying to showcase the technology behind it and mm -hmm. then the painting itself is just trying to be visually pleasing mm -hmm. i guess in a way that you would try to make a song sound nice if there were no lyrics right right you know right. but that's uh, i'm much more on the producer end of stuff like uh, i don't i don't rap i don't sing I don't really use my actual voice with doing music just right. when we're podcasting and talking about art <laughs> <laughs> right right that's cool but yes, yeah, so that's a uh, first time in New York. Uh, do you have any favorite New York artists? Um, I'm glad y'all asked that. Uh, now speaking of the music, the first person from well, I don't, I can't honestly say he was the first person from New York I heard, but the first person I remember just having a CD at my mom's house was uh, Fifty Cent. Mm, Fifty yep. Cent, Get Richard I Trying. Yeah. And then that led me to listening to people like uh, ain't it Jada Kiss from here? Jada Kiss. I don't know actually. I don't know either. Question. I do know that uh, after the assassination yeah. attempt, there was a bunch of memes yeah. with. Uh, yeah. He from Yonkers. He's from Yonkers. Yonkers is nice. Yonkers. Okay, yeah. So you see the Fifty Cent, <laughs> Jada Kiss. Uh, yeah, New yeah. And, you know New York. This pretty much the home of rap. You know, this pretty much yep. where it started. If that's what they say, with like Sugar Hill Gang up in, in Harlem and everything, mm -hmm. kind of kicked it off. It was the first place that uh, and white people rap too. Blondie on Rapture. Which I think was a terrible rap, to be honest. But uh, I like, like that she did that. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, but it's, you see, um, the, after the assassination attempt, the things that were trending were like Donald Trump and then uh, Many Men by Fifty. Mm, <laughs> it was that's like crazy. the number three uh, after all that shit. That is crazy. Which is pretty crazy, but I'm glad. I'm glad you had to come see the city. I love it here. You know, it's pretty. It can be kind of overwhelming. You yeah. from here? Uh, I, no, I've lived here since 2008. So how, where are you from? Uh, I was born in Austin, Texas, and then I was raised in Oakland, California. Mm, yeah, so, so I moved out here from Oakland. You like it? You still here, obviously. I do, I do. I liked it in Oakland too, but it was like the Bay Area was a lot more like, um, uh, everybody was an artist, everyone's a musician, mm. uh, and everyone had this mentality of like, oh, bro, let's trade. You know, like, I'll give you a painting, you give me a painting. And then mm. here, people are like, uh, how much is your painting? That's, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I'm I like, mean, I like yeah. that a little better. They you take know? them serious here, pretty much. Yeah. Or it, not serious, but they respect the work. They, they respect, respect the work, work more. I feel like they in, respect the work. yeah, in New York, we have much more of a culture of, like, respecting the, the work that goes into entertainment. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of New York is entertainment. You've yeah. got Broadway, you've got the film industry, the tele, you know, television right. industry. Right. galleries everywhere yeah we literally just roll past some galleries yeah you're gonna yeah. you should check some out i'll give you a list if i can think of one that you okay. should go see okay for sure you said yeah let's talk more about you doing visual art you said you do some of your album covers yeah um That's i mean don't get me wrong i don't uh there's nothing wrong with having somebody else do your pitch because i don't have people do my work before but uh yeah. sometimes i just be feeling like like prime example uh my homie he he make music himself he paid a guy to do his cover yeah <laughs> The guy took forever to make the cover. No, like that, that happens. He came, <laughs> back, he came. I'm thinking it's gonna be good because he took he took forever. Oh, no. He came back with some stuff that looked like we could have just oh, no. copy <laughs> and paste it together. Yeah, copy it and took paste. you a year to do yeah, that and shit. And then uh, <laughs> it was like then that was just a thing that made me like yeah. Uh, if do I'm gonna pay, yourself. yeah, I can do it myself, <laughs> right, and I can right, pretty much right. instead of me trying to tell you what I or you just coming up with some stuff, I can pretty much. Do it myself because I know what I want on there. And the the yeah. way you roll out your music, do you do, because things have changed. It used to be a lot of albums. Now it's a yep. lot of singles. Mm. True. How did you 
cross over to that? Or are you still I'm pushing s- out like albums? What, what, where do you see yourself going with that? Kind it's of a, uh, I, I push more singles than albums, but it, in all it. honesty, though, uh, but I started off doing singles, uh, because I was like one foot in, one foot out with the music, so. Right. So it was easier for you to jump back and forth and not, you know, mm-hmm. drop yourself into a huge project where you got to finish like right, 12, 13 right. tracks, the production, the post right, production. Right, right, You just right. want to, you, you're hot on that song. You want to mm-hmm. pump that song right out and get it out. And to I'm the a mask. firm believer. Right. In, I'm a firm believer in uh, timing. Like everything has its time. Like one day, like next week, say like prime example, uh, you can make a song about, uh, you make a song about you feel like being the president or something like right. that. Right. And then next thing you know, the election comes. Something yeah, like that. yeah. You can so drop that at the right. Especially lyrics and yeah, the theme of the uh, song. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. hundred percent. But then that following week after that, it might be something else trending in the world. And you might have an old song that you made six months ago that could be, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's pretty Your music much, is almost like a diary. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, uh, there's that in art too. You know, I always tell an artist, like, you don't have to put everything out at once. You know, you can kind of hold back some paintings, right. release them in groups, release them in a smart way. Yeah. You know, trying to think about what you want to be presenting at a time. Okay. You know, I was saying, we're talking about the way things are changing and like albums versus EPs and videos and all that. Are you like, do you know Tierra oh, Wax? Jesus you crazy. like Tierra Wax? What is that? Tierra Wax is a this rapper who has this like, really weird video album that i really like it's like fif- the whole thing's 15 minutes long it's called whack world and it's like a vignette of maybe like seven or eight songs but they're all like a minute long so it's like you know that's crazy and all the videos songs, are attached and all the videos are attached and they like bleed into each other so she released this one track it's pretty cool i like <laughs> musical. it a lot it's like a rap musical it's like a musical that's yeah definitely what i was just going to say are it's there any like rap musical. musicals well there's trapped in the closet yeah, and how many of the, how many of those were there? fucking way too many? <laughs> That's crazy. You know that was a, he was a musical genius. Yeah. Like as a per, I don't agree with he as, uh, with yeah, him yeah, as yeah, a person, yeah. but far as a music right. artist, he's a he's a he's he was a like the who of yeah. rap. <laughs> yeah, in one person. Yeah, oh, I, I, yeah. I, I, watched, Brader. I watched the behind the scenes DVD extras of Trapped in the Closet. They got behind the scenes. Oh yeah, and he's sitting in a uh, like a like a lounger. Like those, it's up on a screen. It's like black with a smoke, and he's smoking a cigar, and he's like turning around and like talking to the camera the whole time. He's like twisting <laughs> around and like talking with a cigar, being like, "I wrote this all in one night. I'm what a genius." In the world, like, <laughs> he wrote. It was like what 30, 20? No, it was like so long? many. Yeah, I know, so he wrote the whole video all that in one night. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. I think it took time Depends for all of Depends on how much time. the first well, one. He I may have like, been a lot of uh, a ton of coke, so. 20 days could have se- seemed like one day. And probably, <laughs> he probably did one and probably got good feedback from the, the fans and probably oh, just yeah. kept going back right. But you never know, though. You never know. But I don't think he did all that in one day, though. No, not yeah. the whole epic. No. But he was, I think he was talking about the first one. But that's maybe. a lot of thinking. You never know. A lot of, yeah. You never know. It is. He put, he put a lot together. Uh, so, yeah, you, you working on any weird concepts, any album concepts? You're just kind of doing it normal. <laughs> uh, and uh, honestly, I want to start doing, like, as far as my videos, yeah. I want to start, instead of just shooting regular videos, I want to start putting, like, movies and, you know, sometimes yeah. funny skits is up, funny skits up in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that yeah. type of stuff appeals to the fans. Well, like, one of my favorite um, rappers right now is that, that girl, those two girls on TikTok, Flying a Boss. You seen them? They're, they're, they run. They're like um, they have a song where they're like running through. She know you know. If I, yeah, I know, love them. Know. I think they're fucking fun. They're so fun. But they like they, they got one viral on TikTok for like running through a market or like a place singing their song. You can get vi- go and viral for anything. Now they got about. like there's like companies like where you know like come over and run through our offices, run oh, through man. our store, you just know, just to run, just to run and do that to do the meme thing, you know, to do the trend again. Mm-hmm. But I guess it's always an, as an artist, it's something you always have to kind of be aware of and look out for. Or is that uh, trap of like you know not becoming a one trick pony where you're just yep. like that's all I do is this one thing and that's I'm crazy you say that because the type of music I make like say it could be five songs on the five songs on the EP mm. I might be rapping on one song I might be singing on one song I might be rapping and singing on one so song. you have ADHD too yep. <laughs> yeah, I actually do in real life I actually do got ADHD in real life my mama never got me diagnosed but I know I got it I know oh I my mom it. did and she gave me a lot of riddling <laughs> and it didn't work. Well, it, it worked back stick. then because I would just sit in the middle of class and cry for no reason. So, I, right. I mean, I guess it depends on what your uh, idea of working is. But right. I wasn't raising my hand out of place as much anymore. That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. 
Uh, so yeah, you're you're in uh, press mode right now. What you, yeah. When it, you're working on an album, you have, yeah. uh, Do you have a drop date or anything? Oh, uh, I don't have a specific drop date because I still got to shoot some videos for it. I actually. Nice. Uh, well, I read some news about distribution. Yeah, uh, I got a label. Pretty much. That's huge. Yeah, dude. Congratulations on that. That is, I mean, that's big. That's yeah. that's. Fun. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm trying to do it big. Like I said, we from Carver, Illinois. If anybody yep. know Carver, Illinois, that's like a. That's like a big step for me. That's like a big opportunity for me. You know oh, man? definitely. Yeah. And you got a you got a squad of people though behind you, and that's the important thing. Yeah, yeah. You solid people. Help. Got some solid people. I try to keep some solid people, around. and they are from Carroll as well. Well, it nice. means a lot, you know, mentally too. Yeah, you yeah. Have people that support you nonstop. Yeah. That's very and important. Man, and that's that's crazy because how y'all say that? Because um, I had if my brother was still here, he'd probably be sitting right here with me. But uh, when I lost my brother, in a, he died in a car crash, too. Mm, condolences. When I lost him, they was pretty much the people that was there for me. Because at that time, I was like, I really wasn't even doing music. I probably didn't make a song in like six months, seven mm. months. You know what I'm saying? And don't nobody really know that but her, because she mm. was around me. You know what I'm saying? But it was a while before I actually got back in the studio. Probably almost a year. Yeah, I mean, that can definitely happen, you know? Yeah. Like, especially when you start... Um I don't know if you feel this way, but like I feel like sometimes when I start doing well and something works out, yes, then I like have this. It's like fight. I have to fight myself to like not self sabotage and just be like, okay, I did that. I'm I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the next thing. You know, that's crazy. You have to keep going because it's like the more you do it, the better it gets, and the more the reach gets. And everyone thinks it's gonna pop off overnight, but it takes a ton of work, a ton of help. You know, you you just just not stopping. You just yeah, hit it right on the stopping. head. That's literally the story of my life. <laughs> not That's stopping. That's literally the story of my life. Like, you'll get so far, get the feeling good, and then it's almost like somewhat self-sabotaging after so long. Yeah, I know. That's pretty much how I be sometimes. I think it's a creative thing. It's the way our brains work. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's like a... Because they say that there's a link between, like, procrastinating and creativity. I always feel like I, ain't, I haven't did enough. Like, even with me signing my deal, I still feel like it's more for me to do. Right. I feel like yeah. there's more for me to do out here. Yeah. I always have to, I, I have like to, to call my options and to try to like focus down because I've got like a thousand different projects. Well, there's only one way to, to do all that. What's that? It's become a vampire. <laughs> because then you can live. Because, right, you feel like you have more, <laughs> you can live forever. more ideas than your lifetime yep. can take care of. So yep. there's hey, only this one is, answer. Morgan, this You've is we're, become new, a fucking we're vampire. in New York, also. not Hollywood. We're not turning in no all these <laughs> vampires over here. Don't forget about. <laughs> Vampire in Brooklyn, the oh, best Eddie Murphy movie ever made. That's true. He's yeah. here. <laughs> that's crazy. And he's definitely a fucking vampire because that guy doesn't age at all. Nope. He almost looks the same way he did in the first fucking Beverly Hills movie. It's that's really crazy. disturbing. And the other two white guys look as old as shit. And there's Eddie Murphy looking as young as he was in the, old, in the 80s. And I'm like, shit, that must be depressing for those then guys. Then fucking... he have a brother named Charlie that died or something yeah, like that. Yeah. The yeah. most beautiful yeah. teeth I've ever seen in my life, man. Yeah. That yeah, man, some white teeth. Char- Charlie Murphy was. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, the best. Lost. You think it was veneers? I don't know. I think he just had some great teeth. I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's, that's nice the way you've taken Lost and, you know, and, and transformed it into something that other people can connect with. I think yeah. that's ultimately like the people always trying to define art and what does art mean. And I think that that did. And that's why music's an art form. That's why video games are an art form. Art form. Yep. Is any, anything that like touches you on an emotional level, level and makes you feel like, yeah, mm. I, I understand this and expression. I feel that way. Would you it's say that video game music is almost an inspiration to your work? Video game music? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got a uh, friend who does, like, what, well, look, before I answer that, yeah. what do you mean by video game music? Like video game music almost like inspires you. To, to make your own music similar yep. in the style of yep. video game music. Uh, yeah, no, nah, honestly, because believe it or not, uh, it, I don't know how much GTA make <laughs> when they make when they sell, but GTA make a lot of money, and I'm pretty sure whoever music is on GTA then probably. Oh made. yeah, there were you a know? lot of '80s songs that weren't Snoop Dogg, like that came Dr. back, Dre. like uh, yeah. I think Flock of Seagulls. What was that one song that was like on the? The commercial well, like yeah. GTA, Spice like it brought a lot of songs that were back That's in the true. early yeah. '80s. But that shit reminds me of Huge. like the again talking about the changing landscape of like music distribution and monetizing your art. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know those deals on some of those. Like my ex's girlfriend had a my ex girlfriend had a, her dad had a song on the Easy Rider soundtrack, the movie Easy Rider, uh, which is like a classic. You know, big mm-hmm. huge movie. Never saw a dime from it. 
Like, because he, he well, yeah, we can all major labels he's can like signed off on a no really shitty contract, no nothing. right? Yeah, exactly. Because he still got to sign a contract, but he got a shitty contract. He got a, he got a shitty contract, or his or his label like didn't know like you know, uh, or it was like a bet, or they took a bad deal or something. But that whole distribution is changing so much. People can buy your record now, like yep. directly from you. Yep. It's Instagram. Easy. What do you think? You sell more like email. CDs, vinyl, or MP3s, like or, or streaming, or or like you know what? How do you like when you have a concert? Do you have like merch and stuff? Uh no, I actually don't have them. I just pretty much have my uh my stuff like say like well she told me I need to start getting these cards to where they can put my phone they can put their phones up to them and it's um like a uh, barcode. Oh yeah, like barcode. tappers. Yeah. The but, RF uh, tappers. Yeah, if anything, I'll just sit up and just put it on Facebook, Instagram, and just have a link that everybody can click and they'll go from there and everybody just start streaming it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I think live live performance is really is the moneymaker now, right? Yeah. Tickets. My last know. show was in Detroit. Oh wow, cool! Yeah, my last show was in Detroit. Detroit has a crazy history with um, like a techno, electronic music, and mm -hmm. like the scene out of there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that the, how important that was. <clears throat> it's a street, literally in Detroit, where they literally got nothing but mu music. Yeah, like, nothing news. but music. Like the studios, all that. It's like That's the street awesome. is pretty much based on music. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's got a really rich history. I love the history of music and equipment, mm -hmm. especially like um, I don't know if you have like a favorite drum machine or anything. Because my favorite is the, the 808. People well, the 808. Everyone loves the 808. Everybody loves the 808. Everyone loves the 808 because it's got that bass kick in it. <clears throat> but the thing that tripped me out, like, and, and not not everyone knows this, but the first, like, the whole genre of electronic music and like making beats and all that was uh, started because of two pieces of gear from Roland, they had the TB303 and the TR606, and it was a drum machine and a bass uh, line creator, and it was made and marketed to guitarists. So that guitarist could like practice with a band mm -hmm. and like, you know, without play a little a bass. Physical band. Yeah, without having a physical band. And they're like, boop, 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 and play with that. But then a musician's creative people got a hold of it and started like programming it yeah. like, in weird ways that were not expected. That's crazy. And, and that actually really defined the genre of like, that's how you get like the techno. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. mm, 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 mm. And people fail to realize hip, there is not just hip, hip hop, R&B. You got techno, you got reggae, you got, jack, like, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, there's it's like, like and reggae. That's more like a, and then like a Jamaican, it's like a, somewhere like that. A lot of, a lot of or, uh, good, like even Police had a reggae sound early and then, on, and yeah. they combined it with punk rock. And then there's the whole so. history of like you know the skinheads in in uh, in London, like you know the anti-racist, anti-fascist skinheads. They're like rude boys yeah. and like all the rude ska, rude boy, yeah, all the ska <laughs> stuff rude. coming out of there. <laughs> Which was an awesome, you know, blending of culture. I mean, cultures change so much, and you know, there's so been so much. many genres and stuff. How do you define your genre? Do you do you try, or do you just say, "I'm making, I'm rapping." I'm leave a, it at that. Uh, I'm a, I, I call it art. It's art, like, cause, like I said, one song I might sing, and then one song I might get on her rapping, and then one song I might get on her singing and rapping. I've heard, I didn't had a guy literally come to me and tell me, "Bro, your song make me want to cry. Your songs be making me want to cry." So, that feels wow. good, doesn't it? It do make me feel good. I love it that. Do make me That's feel a good, powerful though. thing. Yeah, it do make me feel good, though. Um, I mean, I'm doing something right. I'm yeah, exactly. Right. Definitely. If you're connecting with people on that level, you yeah. know, it's the same thing as like uh, somebody going to a museum and looking at a Rothko, like a giant pane of just red and just crying. They just cry. Mm -hmm. Usually that happens to me when I look in the mirror. <laughs> I just go to the bathroom. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> oh, poor Morgan. <laughs> and I call my parents and they're like, we're you sorry. Look, we're what sorry. happened to my hair? I miss my hair. <laughs> what happened yeah, to man. my face? You're, st you're, still the mo you're still the most beautiful Jew oh, in Brooklyn to me. Thank you. You're I welcome. Crazy. <laughs> we are crazy. So, <laughs> we are a little crazy. We have about a couple minutes left. Um, like, Is there anything you want to shout out? Where can people find you and follow you? Like, Shout out Instagram, your Instagram and stuff. Uh, Instagram 36 underscore mud with two D's. Uh, Facebook 36 mud. Nice. YouTube 36 mud. Go stream all my stuff. Spotify. Quick question: How'd you come up with the name 36 I told you mud? It's Forty blocks in Cairo, so 36. Mm -hmm. That was 36 three. Uh, my brother that I told you that was supposed to be here, me, him, and it was a few other guys. We used to be out there. Uh, and we had a we got a guy named Ke we got a friend. He's still alive. Thank God, his name Keyshawn. He came up with the name 36 for well, and it stuck. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to use it and kind of like turn it from a bad thing to a good thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's where the mud comes from? Mud came from, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bringing it yeah. out of it? Yep, coming uh, up, getting it out the mud. Yep. You spell with two Ds, right? Two Ds. You know two Puddle D's. of Mud? 
With two Ds? Oh, man, that's uh, crazy. He should you know, but that? don't don't even bring that up. What is that? It's, it's like, a really it, shitty early alternative rock band. That, <laughs> yeah, they were like man, a, kind of like Papa Roach vibe, I think. Right? No, they were worse. They were worse than Papa Roach? I actually kind of don't mind too much of Papa Roach. I'm going to take them out. Yeah. But, uh, well, they have, they they have mud with two Ds. You say they were shitty, though? No, they were. I don't know. I mean, they it was were on popular. the radio a lot. I mean, it was on the radio. Uh, it was on the radio. It was yeah. good. It was Maybe good. just wasn't your taste. Because you yeah. know, at that time, you couldn't just get anything on the radio. That's true. You well, I'm. Just get anything. Now I expect they us. Be putting anything on the radio. I expect us to start hearing you on the radio, too. Yeah, so. I was just on the radio. Uh, tap into uh, what's the name of the radio station in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh. I forgot the name of it, but I'll uh, I'll send you guys the information. Yeah, I'll oh yeah, we'd love to let, see it. It'll be on our uh, this week. Yeah, it'll be on our this week. Very nice. Yeah. Go check out Three Six Mud yeah. on Instagram and other places. Stick around if for uh, or join the Patreon to stick around for the extended show. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Go. <laughs> We move like the mafia, don't get involved You acting like you calling shots, well let me see you make that call This be that murder shit, I know that case ain't gonna get solved Gotta watch for the back door, cause niggas really ain't your dog Damn, every day bitch you can catch me out here thugging We throw up gang signs and get off jigaboos in public And my double cup muddy, bad bitch acting so slutty Boy don't fuck with the gangs, we pulling up just like Russians Close the back door,